All right, so in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick and dirty way to make a panorama. So right now we are in Adobe Bridge. And as you can see, this is actually a drone shot, a drone panorama. So I just have these eight shots of Reine in Lofoten or Reine or however it's pronounced. So I just take all of them and open them in camera roll. Now how I do panoramas differs a little bit. I am not super much into it, but generally if I'm just on my regular camera, I will either put it on the tripod and then just change the tripod uh, and, and make the panorama in that way, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Or if I'm on the drone, I will usually do it manually. There is not really much of a difference. I never use tripod setups like nodal points and so forth. If you are very much into panorama shots, it might help you out. But if you only do it occasionally, it's just extra gear you carry into the field. And I really do not want to do that. Now that I have opened them, I just press Ctrl A to select them all. I right click and I merge to panorama. When you have merged to panorama, you have a few different ways of project the panorama on. Generally, I find cylindrical to be the best option. Sometimes spherical is, but as you can see, cylindrical have a tendency to stretch it a little bit more. And for the most part, you cannot use perspective. So generally cylindrical. You can warp the edges, but the problem is that if you have the horizon within the shot, it's usually warped too. Of course, you can take care of that later, but in this particular case, uh, I will just fill up the edges in another way. You can hit the fill edges. Sometimes it makes a good job, other times it doesn't. In this particular case, it seems as if it has done a good job, but let's untake it for now and just do it all manually. So I just press merge and save it in my destination folder. So this is how our panorama looks before we have done any adjustments to it. So I'll just go ahead and remove chromatic aberration. I will definitely apply some more contrast, put the clarity down a tad bit just to soften it out. And I will go in and make a graduated filter on the sky just to bring that one down into range mask and just bring it up so I don't darken down the shadows on top of the mountains. Something like this here. Great. Maybe a tad bit more contrast. I'll just edit it on a white background so we can see, bring up the exposure a tad bit, maybe bring down the highlights a bit here in the sky. And yeah, maybe actually bring the shadows down a tad bit. All right, then I'll go into the transform tool. And in this particular case, because I find the panorama to be a tad bit long, I will just change the aspect a tad bit, not too much because we don't want the mountains to be like, you know, overdone, overstretched. So just something like this here. This kind of looks realistic. Alrighty. So that's about it for what I will do in camera raw. Now I will bring it into Photoshop. So I just press open image. So right now we are in Photoshop. As we chose not to fill the edges automatically, we will have to stretch them out here in Photoshop. But first I will just crop it a little bit. So I choose my crop tool and I just choose the free here. Just move out something like this here and 
There we go. Now let's get as much of the sky in there as possible. What I will do first is I will just make a selection of everything here on the right, on the left. Press Ctrl T, which is the transform tool. Hold down Shift and left click and pull in this part of the image, just a tad bit, just to bring it a little bit further in. We can do it one more time with more of the photo. Control T, Shift and bring it in just a tad bit, not too much. We again don't want to overdo the mountains. And this is good. Crop it a little bit more, something like this here. Alrighty. And press Control T again, right click and choose Warp. And then we basically just stretch out the image here to the edge. Again, without distorting the mountains too much. There we go. And down here in the corner. Great. So right now the panorama in itself is actually done. Now it's just about cleaning up the parts you don't want in there. Just make a new layer. Just go to my healing brush tool and just remove that one there. Let's see if there's anything I want to get rid of. Not really. I will just put a luminosity mask on a brightness contrast layer and bring down the brightness a little bit of the highlights, but bring up the contrast. So before and after, and maybe bring down the brightness of the sky a tad bit more. Image, apply image. This is a luminosity mask. This is how it looks, Alt left click. Control L to bring in the mask. Just affect the sky there above the mountains. And just paint in the mask so that it looks good. No need to be super duper precise and bring down the sky a tad bit more. Maybe bring up the contrast. That layer we put in a group and put a mask on that group, invert it so we don't show it, and then we just put a gradient on top, of course white, <laughs> and we just mask out where we don't want the effect to be, which is on the mountains here. Alrighty, so now we only have darkened down the sky a little bit. I can see up here on my histogram that we can definitely bring up the brightness a bit more. Let's just edit it on a white background. And the reason why I want to edit it on a white background is for me to see how it will look more or less on a white wall, just to get the exposure correct. And bring down the brightness, control I, and just paint in where I want it to be a little bit darker. Might also be a tad bit too blue right now. I'll just make a hue saturation layer, go into blues, Bring down the blues, something like this here. Like all these adjustments is basically up to yourself. Control Shift Alt E, go to Filter, Other, High Pass, and just make a sharpening pixels there of 1.7. It's a little bit potato potato. 
zoom in, put a mask on that one, control I to invert it, and just paint in where you want the image to be a little bit sharper. Basically just on the cliffs here and on the foreground town. There we go. Maybe not so much on the water. So this is more or less the finished image. What I would do now is I would put it away and when the lighting in the room has changed, because this is basically midday, so in the evening I would look at it one more time and maybe change uh, the colors and contrast a little bit more, maybe get some feedback from my feedback group. With the release of this video, I still have a 40% discount on my more advanced Photoshop tutorials. So if you want to learn even more editing tricks, be sure to check out the description of this video. This is how I make my panoramas and I hope you enjoyed this fast little video. And if you enjoyed it, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment and be sure to check out my other video which I link up here.